The young prince is destined to kill his father, marry and sleep with his mother, the chief priest revealed. Once upon a time, in a kingdom far away, there lived a king named Adewale and his queen named Abike. They were desperate to have a child and tried everything possible but to no avail. Their prayers were finally answered and they were blessed with a healthy baby boy. The entire village rejoiced and celebrated the birth of the royal child. However, little did they know that this child was destined with a terrible fate. A few days after the baby's birth, a village priest visited the palace to share a chilling prophecy about the newborn prince. The young prince is destined to kill his father, marry and sleep with his mother. The villagers, king and queen were all horrified by this ill-fated prophecy. The royal couple was determined to prevent this dark fate from unfolding. Refusing to believe that their own child could bring such tragedy to their family, King Adewale made the decision to have this young prince eliminated. The queen, heartbroken and sorrowful, pleaded with her husband to spare the baby's life. However, he remained adamant in his belief that by getting rid of the child, he could prevent the prophecy from coming true. The majestic palace chief guard named Toby was instructed to take the baby to the evil forest and kill him there. He took the baby to the evil forest to carry out the king's command. On getting to his destination, he took out his cutlass. As he was about to slaughter the baby, his eyes caught the baby's beautiful face, looking so innocent and unaware of what was about to befall him. He only got cold feet and couldn't bring himself to kill such a harmless soul. So, he decided he would abandon the baby in the evil forest and let the gods determine his fate. The gods had other plans for the baby. As that evening, a kind hunter found the baby and took him home. The kind hunter raised him as his own son. He named him Kola. Kola grew up to be a fierce warrior with unparalleled strength and intelligence. Trained in warfare and skilled in hunting, he became one of the best in the land. He was a key figure in defending his new village against invaders and leading successful attacks on the neighboring villages. However, he was unaware of his true identity as an adopted child and the prophecies linked to his birth. After his adoptive father's passing, Kola became the leader of the village. During Kola's reign, the village thrived and was successful, both economically and politically. He led them to victory in numerous wars, making their village one of the most powerful in the land. However, during one of these conflicts, Kola attacked a kingdom called Ishika. After days of battle, his army emerged victorious and Kola claimed the kingdom as his own. Kola mercilessly killed the king who resisted him and took the king's wife as his own. He continued to conquer more kingdoms and villages, merging them into one large empire called Ishikara. Kola crowned himself as the king and emperor of this new empire. Initially, the people of Ishikara embraced Kola's rule, but strange occurrences soon began to plague the kingdom. Rivers ran red with blood. A leprosy outbreak affected some villagers, and some sinister events unfolded. Kola was puzzled and wondered day and night why all these calamities came upon his kingdom. One afternoon, the Ephah priests were summoned to the palace. The tribe chiefs and the queen were also present. King Kola sought answers from the priests about why the gods had abandoned the kingdom of Ishikara. The priests then shared with the king that the gods were displeased because a certain family in the kingdom had committed a taboo.
King Kola demanded to know which taboo was broken and which family was responsible for the crime. The priest responded by revealing that the taboo was incestuous, involving a son sleeping with his birth mother. The enraged King Kola vowed to eliminate the entire family responsible for this sacrilegious action, beginning with the son who was involved. He then inquired the priest once more about identifying the family involved. The priest responded by accusing the king of bringing sorrow upon his people. Enraged, King Kola drew his cutlass, ready to strike the priest. Questioning, how could he lie against his king? How dare you accuse me, King Kola of Ishikara Kingdom, of such an atrocity? He yelled at the priest angrily. My king, the gods have spoken, not me. The priest answered meekly. The priest went on to explain that according to the gods, the king's action had brought doom upon the kingdom of Ishikara. The king's relationship with his mother had resulted in a taboo pregnancy, causing the gods to abandon them. King Kola began sweating heavily, appearing extremely puzzled as he tried to recall the information. His new wife, the former queen of the land, quickly approached the king and examined the back of his head. After inspecting his ear, she let out to a piercing scream. She cried out in despair, collapsing on the ground. You shouldn't be alive. You shouldn't be alive, she muttered, as confusion spread among the onlookers. How can this be? How can I be married and pregnant for my own son? She yelled profusely. The queen continued to address her son, recounting the efforts made to prevent the dark prophecy from coming true. The audience was puzzled, prompting one of the chiefs to seek clarification from the queen. Unbeknownst to all, the queen was no other than Queen Abike, the wife of King Adewale. She tearfully narrated the details of the prophecy foretold 27 years ago and how they attempted to prevent it by taking the life of their own child who turned out to be King Kola. Every aspect of the prophecy unfolded as predicted. King Kola killed his father, Adewale, who was the king of Ishika, that refused to surrender after the kingdom was conquered by Kola. Kola married and slept with his mother, whom he thought was just the beautiful wife of the deceased king, and even impregnated her. Realizing the gravity of what had happened, the queen, who was also Kola's mother, was filled with shame and decided to end her life. She couldn't bear the thought of what had happened between her and her son. It was a taboo she thought of. She left the meeting and headed to her room, where she picked up a knife and stabbed herself. King Kola was overwhelmed with self looting and shock upon learning about his unfortunate fate. He couldn't fathom the destruction he had caused in his own kingdom. He also recalled his vow to seek revenge on the family responsible for bringing war to his kingdom, starting with the son who committed the taboo. In the kingdom, a king's commands are absolute and must be obeyed without question. King Kola had made a decision that cannot be reversed, and now he must face the consequences of his earlier decision. He retired to his inner room and poisoned himself. The moral lesson from this tale involves the consequences of attempting to avoid destiny. King Adewale and Queen Abike attempted to prevent destiny from unfolding only to inadvertently contribute to the prophecy's fulfillment. Here is another moral lesson to learn from this tale. The significance of empathy and mercy. If Kola had shown mercy to King Adewale, he might not have resorted to killing him and then feeling remorseful afterwards. 
This story also emphasizes the theme of faith, illustrating that efforts to alter one's destiny can result in tragic consequences. Furthermore, the importance of pronouncements and utterances was highlighted in the story. If King Kola hadn't angrily declared that it would result in the death of the family that committed the taboo, he might still be alive today. Thank you for watching and remember to subscribe, like, share and stay tuned for the next one.